Who to blame? Who to blame? Everybody looking, somebody to blame. But when I sit down and I analyze the whole thing, there was nobody to blame myself for those things. I say, who to blame? Who to blame? Everybody looking, somebody to blame. But when I sit down and I analyze the whole thing. Hi, uh, I'm Professor Schmidt, and I'm going to be your instructor and your guide through the coastal policy class. Um, thought I'd just uh, record a little bit of something here. Uh, this is my my research office in my home. Um, I wanted to talk to you just for a couple of minutes about what a distance learning class is. Some people uh, think that because I'm not there uh, physically and because um, they're not coming into a classroom uh, every couple of days or every day or whatever that it is different from a normal class and I wanted to just ask you to please think of it as a real class in which we come to the classroom by way of uh, the internet by way of our uh, web CT website uh, and and, and uh, other sources uh, but we go to class uh, every day or every couple of days, we do the assignments on time, we do the readings, and we take notes just as we do in a real class. Um, it is a little bit more demanding on you because you sort of have to make up your own schedule and you have to make sure that you are not forgetting to come to class. Um, it is very easy for a lot of students in distance learning classes to yield to the pressure of their job the pressure of their research program that they work with uh, or the pressure of, of classes where there's actually an instructor in a, uh, in, a, in a classroom and in a building and to therefore overlook my class uh, or my classes. Um, please don't do that because um, there are going to be assignments that are due and there will be points taken off if those assignments are not met. Um, there are deadlines for things like the project proposal outline, for example, and I take that very seriously. Uh, I measure a student's current uh, abilities, their willingness to learn, and their potential as a future successful um, scientist, teacher, project manager, or something else in coastal policy by how they approach things like posting uh, really good, serious, thoughtful uh, postings, discussion postings, and on time, and also by how promptly and how skillfully you lay out a research project. Um, I have a lot of material available for you that guides you through it, that tells you how to do a research project, how to plan it out, uh, you know, all the different stages of it. But if, if you uh, don't essentially meet the deadlines, and if you don't give me something that is qualitative and substantial, um, I'm going to be disappointed. The other thing that you have to remember is at some point you may want me to write letters of recommendation for you. At some point you may want me to um, write or answer a phone call for a grant that you, you've applied for, uh, uh, a job that you've applied for, a promotion that you've applied for. And I keep pretty good records of my students. And if I consider you to be someone who really um, dragged along, let's say, who really didn't put in an uh, enthusiastic maximum amount of effort, um, I'll either just ask you not to have me write or recommend you, or the letter isn't going to be very good. This is not a threat. Uh, I'm trying to tell you that I take my courses very seriously. I have a large number of students. I have many, many very successful students who are working all over the world in some of the most uh, amazing uh, programs and projects uh, and, and are astonishing people. And I want you to be one of those as well. So my job is not just to walk you through coastal policy and show you all the fascinating things and, and help you get excited about the issues of the coast, the oceans, um, climate change, regulation, the politics of trade-offs, but also to make you a, a very successful professional. So help me do that, would you? Thanks. Talk to you later. Who to blame? Who to blame? Everybody looking.